Well, hello and welcome back to the Matt's Automotive channel. I currently do not have a project car at this time, so I thought this may be a great opportunity to address the trailer in which I use uh, to tell my uh, project vehicles. I got this thing uh, roughly a year ago and I've hauled a number of rigs with it. Um, however, I've never really looked or looked the rig over, inspected any of it. I'd like to take a look at the e-brakes, see if those are in good shape, um, the tires, uh, the wheel bearings, that sort of thing. Um, I did look at the date stamped on these tires and they're about, uh, one of them's 10 years old, the other's 11 years old, so I'm definitely going to need to replace those. Uh, but anyway, with that said, uh, let's get started. Alright, let's start by getting one of these wheels in the air. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, the center of this with the jack. I'm slide one of the ramps under uh, the side here to keep that wheel up. I just saw the wheel drop and I took that last uh, lug nut off, so it looks like these are uh, lug centric rather than hub centric. <clears throat> Alright, in case you're wondering how I know how old these uh, tires are, um, stamped in every tire, uh, you'll see this uh, DOT uh, tag on here, and then if you just move on over, you'll see this uh, <clears throat> stamp here and this little oval shape here, and there's uh, four numbers there. Uh, the first two represent the week of the year. So this one would be manufactured the 12th week in uh, 2010. Uh, shortly after I uh, bought this trailer, I did add some grease um, on the tip of this hub here. You have a little rubber cap and it exposes a Zerk uh, fitting right there. And so this is relatively new grease, but that's as far as I took it. So I really don't know what's beyond this. So, you know, I'll take that off and then uh, tap the cover off here. There we go. And then we'll clean this up and there should be a castle nut into that, hopefully with a cotter pin. Let's get all this grease off of here. Okay, and yeah, the, cotter, or the castle nut does pin freely. So we'll just need to get the cotter pin out of there and uh, we should be able to take that off and then pull this uh, drum off. It's my understanding uh, that when you put grease into this uh, Zerk joint here, Zerk fitting, um, that it just uh, greases the outer bearing and not the inner bearing. Um, I'll, we'll take a look at that one once we get the assembly off and see if that's actually true. But uh, for the time being, let's get the remainder of this grease out of here. Just using a little bit of brake clean here. Well, I tell you, I'm in uncharted territory here. I've never really worked on a trailer before. So I've never seen a uh, cotter key like this, if it even is a cotter key, but um, there's a little tab here, and then there's one that goes up between the castle nuts. So my assumption is I just bend this down. So we'll see. Rick was just bending those down, and then it still binds up a bit, so I think you kind of just have to hold it in place and then spin it out. <laughs> Boy, that really does lock well. There we go. Interesting. I see. This little washer here has these tabs built right into it. like that interesting never seen that before <clears throat> okay and then there's the make an washer there and actually I think we should just pull this off and take a look at it okay 
All right, and then this, this is the outer bearing here. That comes right out. So we'll clean all these up. We'll clean up the bearing raised and then inspect it, make sure that everything looks good. There's no pits and whatnot. Um, and then on the other side, we should have an inner bearing. Yep, right there. So we'll go ahead and pull that next. All right, uh, while we have the assembly apart, I'm curious to know that where does the grease come out when I put grease in through this zerk fitting here? So let's find out. There's nothing real obvious. So let's just start pumping a little bit in here and just watch. Aha, I see some coming out back there. I don't see anything coming up near the front where the front bearing is or the outer bearing. But it looks like when you do this, it definitely hits the, uh, the rear. Okay, there, now we got some new stuff coming out. Okay, interesting. Be careful not to get any onto the pad here, the electric brake pad. All right, I don't really know for sure, but uh, since the grease is coming out near the um, inner bearing, I'm sure that the grease works its all the way out and into the front. So maybe it does um, re-grease uh, both bearings. Uh, if you know for sure, uh, leave a comment. Because the, um, the back side of this has a seal, whereas the front doesn't, it's just a washer. So as long as that seal's good, all the grease should be uh, forced out towards the front. Uh, brake shoes appear to have uh, still a lot of material left on it. So I think there's a lot of life there. Um, I'm not really sure about these uh, electromagnetic here, which actually uh, gets energized with electricity and then comes out and then against this. And it, the way it works is it, it drags against this. And then of course, the more current that you push through that, the harder it sticks to this. And then since it's rotating, it pushes this mechanism uh, forward here, which uh, engages the, uh, the shoes. That's how that works. So I'm not sure if this is normal. I'm sure it is, uh, but it doesn't feel like brake material. Um, so I don't know. Um, as far as wear on the drum here, I don't really feel much wear at all. So I think there's a lot of life left. In. Okay. Go ahead and remove the seal. It's a bigger bearing on the inside. All right. Clean all the grease out. All right, so let's go ahead and pack the bearing now. There we go. And then we'll just pump all the old stuff out. Okay, looks good. <clears throat> and there's our pack bearing. All right, we'll go ahead and insert our new pack bearing. Okay, and install our seal. Get some grease in here. Seal in. And then you definitely want to get all the excess off the outside of this because you don't want any of this grease uh, flinging out once it starts spinning and get uh, make contact with the drum itself where the friction material is going to rub. So I try to keep the outside of this clean.
Okay, then we can go ahead and reinstall. Okay, and then before we install the uh, drum back on, we want to make sure that the uh, spindle here is greased everywhere. We'll install the drum back onto the axle. Okay, now we can go ahead and install the uh, outer bearing with the uh, cone-shaped uh, narrow part going inward. Uh, followed by <clears throat> the locking ring and then the castle neck. Just keep threading this on until it stops. Make sure everything is on there nice and sturdy. And then back it off uh, 45 degrees to a quarter turn. And then uh, once the tab lines up with the castle nut, uh, just go ahead and bend that up. And then you're done. And there we go. All right, now let's uh, start pumping uh, grease in until we see it come out. And we'll put the caps on and then we know we're all good. Okay, and there we can see the grease coming out. So we know uh, that uh, bearing, all the bearings are full of grease. The axle's all lubed up. And uh, we can put the cap back on. Okay, we'll tap the cap back on. cap over. Now let's put the wheel on and we're done. Okay, let's clean the excess off. <clears throat> and now we can just bolt the wheel back on. Test the brake. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, spin the wheel. I'm going to apply power. Stops it instantly. So that's uh, definitely working. Um, I, I'll uh, apply the brake, and then once the brake's on, I'll be able to torque the uh, nuts down to their spec. All right. In case you're wondering um, which uh, pins uh, lock the brakes up or activate the brakes, it... okay. The pins that are responsible for um, activating the brake um, are this one and this one so this little uh, indentation here is uh, on the top this is the ground and uh, this one here would be the brake so you go negative here positive here that should activate the trailer brakes all right uh, so i got this little 12 volt battery hooked up to those pins and uh, i'll go ahead and just complete the circuit here and uh, the brake and now i can hold the wheel so i can uh, <clears throat> all right uh we're done for now if you're watching closely you probably saw a couple things that didn't look quite right uh number one was the uh, castle nut uh retainer um i reused the old one because i'm i just ordered the part and i'm waiting for them to come in they should be in tomorrow the other thing was i didn't set the brakes and again i'm waiting for the uh, caliper used to set the brakes to do that so Anyway, when those parts are received, I'll go ahead and uh, make another quick video um, on how to set the brake. 
So anyway, uh, till then, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.